Hello everyone and welcome to the 13th video in our survival game series done by Brackies. I am the CEO of Brackies and today we are going to take a look at creating audio, more specifically audio zones, and uh, how you're going to switch between them. So um, let's open up Unity, I've already done this. And uh, I'm a little freaked out because I already recorded this video once. Though um, I don't know if I forgot to press record or if my recorder just fucked up. But um, yeah, it deleted the recording. So um, we're going to try this one more time. All right. So um, I've changed up the Unity project a little bit since we left off. Um, I have imported these two pieces music. And the first one is called Enemy Territory. And it's kind of a frightening or exciting piece. And the other one is called Friendly Music. And it's moody and nice. The one we are going to be using when you're near the town. So um, we won't doing, be doing the easy fading and nice switching in this tutorial. Though we'll be creating the most fundamental game logic for audio changes. And I'll show you some pretty cool tips for when, when using audio. So these two files are pretty damn huge. This one is 7.2 megabytes and this one is 6.1. And that's way too, hu uh, too large for making games. Um, so I would definitely uh, recommend that you compress your files before importing them to Unity. And I'll definitely also be compressing these um, before I include them in the scripts and assets pack um, which you can get from our website so um, I'm just in a little hurry so I won't be doing this now all right so uh, if you take a look at these um, and click them and view them in the in inspector we can see that I have checked off the box saying 3d sound and this is because I want this to play in 2d meaning that no matter where our player exists in the scene um, it's going to be equally loud, uh, so it won't have any pitch or volume changes. Okay, so let's actually go ahead and get started now. So select the two audio files and drag them into a new folder, which we're going to create now. So call this audio, select them and drag them in there. And we can also go ahead and clean up from our last tutorial, drag the AI symbol inside the scripts folder. We ain't going to be messing with that right now. Okay, so uh, let's create a new script. Right click, create JavaScript, and we are going to call this um, audio sound. S sound? S I don't know, sound. And uh, we're going to double click to open it up in Mono Develop as always. And yes, that was Mono Develop. And we are going to go ahead and delete the two functions. And we are going to create a new function which we have never used before. It's called on trigger enter. And then start parentheses other collider with capital. And then open up the brackets. So let me go ahead and quickly explain what this function is and when it's called. The onTrigger fun uh, enter function is called whenever a game object, for example the player, is um, entering this collider we are going to attach to the game object in a second. So simply whenever something enters this game object, it's going to call this function. And the other um, uh, and the things in the parentheses simply means that we are going to col uh, want to collect some data from this entering. So we want to know uh, quite a few things. And here we are going to call this data other. And it's going to be a type collider. It's going to be the collider that we want something to that we want to know something about. So here we collect some dat data so that we can later check if it was the player that entered the zone. So uh, let's go ahead and create a private variable. And private just means that it won't be visible inside of Unity because we are not going to change it outside of the script. So that's just cleaning up the hierarchy a bit. 
So the collider, it's going to be called. And it's going to be a type string with a capital. This is important. And then ended up with a semicolon. All right, so um, inside our on trigger intra, we're going to type the collider, meaning the variable we just created, equals other dot tag. So the collider here, this is just text. This is just a name, or in this case, a tag. And uh, it's going to be equal the collider or the collide, the one we collided with, stack. So um, if we go ahead and type if the collider is equal to player, end up the parentheses and create the brackets, then we're going to check if the game object that collided with these, this audio zone is the player, has a tag called player. And this way we can know that it was the player that entered the zone and thereby play some audio. So that's what we are going to do now. We are going to play the audio. So inside the if statement, type audio.play. Ended up with a parentheses. And under that, we are going to type audio.loop equals true. So here we are saying that we want to play the audio attached to the audio zone. And we want it to loop when it's done playing. And this is going to loop till infinity. This is never going to stop unless we do, do it for it. So uh, let's do that by creating a new function. And this is going to be called on trigger exit. This is exactly the same as the on trigger enter, except this is whenever the, something leaves the trigger. And we can go ahead and copy everything from the parentheses of the collider down to the ending of the function, because we are going to be using a lot of the same code. So actually, the only thing we want to change here is this. We're going to delete that. So now whenever the player exits the collider, audio.loop is going to be false. And thereby, the audio is going to play out until it's done. And then it's just not going to start playing again. Though uh, the audio files that I'm going to be using here uh, are not quite optimized for gaming pur purposes. Normally in games, you create very small loops. Um, they could be around 20 seconds long. And then you just, when you want to crossfade something, um, you just set it to stop looping. And thereby you can set another audio file to start looping about 15 seconds after. But my files are about 3 minutes long. So uh, I just want for now to make it stop immediately, else we are going to have two audio files running, uh, playing simultaneously, and that does not sound well. So audio dot stop parentheses and then a semicolon. Um, maybe in a uh, a later video we are going to take a look at how to actually fade between the two using coding. Um, simply adjusting the volume, though this is a little more d difficult, that would be done in a for loop, simply, uh, uh, simply adjusting the volume a little bit every frame. But for now, let's start with, uh, let, we'll just use this logic, so you can go ahead and click back into Unity, and uh, see if we get any errors. I think we are good for now. And... Uh, Let's go ahead and create the game objects which we are going to be using. So game object create other, no game object create empty, rename it to audio zone zero one, hit add component physics and a sphere collider. Now let's position it zero zero zero, drag it into the center of our scene into the center of our village and scale it up a little further than our village 
Yeah, that looks about right. So inside of here, let's drag this script, the audio zone script. And let's also apply the audio by double clicking the audio folder and dragging in the friendly music. We want this to be, uh, be set to play on awake and maybe drag down the volume a little bit. So when we play the game, let's go ahead and do that now. You can hear the music playing. And when we leave the collider... Uh, nothing's happening. I wonder why. So if we take a look at our code again, you can see that it's looking for a game object with a certain tag. This tag is not currently attached to our player. So the function is simply not being called. So we have to actually select our player, focus on him, go up to the right hand corner of the inspector, hit the tag and change it to player. You could also make your own tag by going to add tag, expanding the tag section and then just creating elements. But I'm good with the default player tag for now. Now we should see that when we start the game and run out of the audio zone, it will immediately stop playing. Not really though. <laughs> um, let's take a look. If we select our audio zone, yet another trap that is easy to, to fall into. Under the sphere collider, we need to track the is trigger. Else we can collide with the box. Let me show you this. The only reason why we didn't collide with it is because we started inside of it. If I don't check the is trigger and try to run into the collider, I'll simply run into an invisible wall. And so let's check the is trigger, put it back, and now it will hopefully be working. Indeed, the audio stops playing. Now let's create a second audio zone, which we can run into, so everything won't be completely silent. So duplicate the audio zone, call this 02, drag in the enemy territory, and uncheck the play on awake. Now we can drag this over to our enemy, so that it gets a little exciting when we are near him. You can select both audio zones if you want to see how they're intersecting. I'm going to take this and drag it a little closer to our village. Now hit play. You can hear the first piece, go piece going on. We should be hearing it stopping about now. And the new piece starts playing. That's basic audio, audio zones and audio switching. Thanks for watching the video guys and I'll see you in the next one.